In this session we're going to look at creating a structure in HTML to help us create a framework so that we can use commands such as inner HTML to change the questions and change the options that we present to users. So in this case here if you select red you can actually go through and then reset back to the start or yellow and you notice that we're using a very similar structure for each question but the question will change and also the number of options will change based upon where you're going within the expert system. So what we want to do is create a framework. We want to create our JavaScript and then we want to create our cascading style sheet to control the user interface. So let's get underway and have a look at how we can actually build the HTML component of this. Now inside our HTML document, we're going to be looking at our body tags. So we'll have the open body tag and the closed body tag. Normally we would use lowercase up here. We won't worry about the overheads. We'll look at more of that when we actually code it. But to give you an idea of the structure, the very first thing we need to do is actually use a div tag to create a container. So we're going to use div ID and call it container, which will give us our work area with inside our HTML document. Within that, we can actually place our very first command which is a heading command, H1. But this particular heading command, we're going to give it an ID such as major title. This way we can actually change the title if we would like to on the page, or we can make it disappear or reappear. So we can actually call it by its name with an inner HTML major title. Once we've got that, we can create another container. This is going to be our question area. So much the same way we've gone div ID is container. This one we did div ID is question area. So in this area here, in the open div tag and the closed div tag, our question to the user will appear. To make that appear, we need to put in a heading two, and we gave it an ID such as question to ask. So what are we asking the user to respond to? We're using a heading two, so it's slightly smaller than the heading one, but we'll be able to use the inner HTML command once again to change what text the user sees. The other area we need is actually our button area. So within our page, there'll be a separate area where our options appear. So we could have two options, three options, five options, it's up to you. You can have the options running across the page. You might, um, in this area, have pull down lists, radio buttons, check boxes, etc. But this gives us an area to actually display the options to the users. And we can represent that or we can actually talk to that area by calling the ID button area. So now we've got our structure, we can actually go ahead and code this. When I code this, I'm going to be using Atom, and I'll also be moving between that and Chrome to display the HTML in a browser. So let's open up Atom and start a new document. Now that we've opened Atom, the first thing we're going to do is go to File and go to New File. Once we've created a new file, the first thing we're going to do is actually start with the document HTML command to let browsers know that we're actually using a HTML document and we're going to open with our HTML tag. Now I like to place in here the developer comments straight away. So use these correctly and I'm actually going to be opening bookends and in here then we can actually place some information like you can put in dash dash and then place the programmer. In this case here it's El Marsden then you can actually place in the year that it was created. So you could actually even put in like year level if you're at school. So in some case, this is a little bit overkill, but it helps if you're using it for school and being assessed. Then you can actually put like, you know, the course title. And in this case, I'm gonna put intelligence systems. And then if you wanted to, you can place the date that you started creating this. And then one of the most important things is the project overview. This is just a very brief discussion, like if you're making an intelligent system, what the, intelli what the intelligent system is, and that will help any sort of developer that's coming in and reading your code. And once you finish that, you can then close the developer comments off. So what we might also do is save this now. So I'm just gonna go File, Save As. So you might actually call it ES Project HTML, or you might actually use your name as the file or, or the follow protocol, you may start with index.html and click on save. 
Now once you've saved this as a .html file, you notice that we now have some error trapping or tracking in this. So you don't really need to worry too much. But first thing I notice, it's not document, it's actually doc type. So make sure you come up here and change that to doc type. It's HTML. And then you can go into HTML command. So once we've done that, we can then start working on the overhead. So we can start going the head tag. That also has a corresponding close tag. But before we get there, we also have a meta tag. So make sure that you use your meta tag. In most developer programs such as Dreamweaver, they'll put actually put a um, char set in there that's equal to the um, UTF-8. And if you wanted to, you can actually add more sort of meta tags in there to help with browsers and searching. After you've got that, you've actually got your title. And with an open title, you can actually put an example, ES, and then close the title tag. Then we can actually then link to external JS files. So underneath the title, and before you do your close head script, what I'm gonna do in here is actually place some comments. Just to remind me to do, do my links to my external link to Java script file. And also we need to have a cascading style sheet. So I'll also put a reminder in here and go external link to CSS file as well. So these will appear between the close title and the close head tag. Once we've done that, we can then open our body tag and we also need to close our body tag. So the first thing we need to do is declare a div tag with an ID of container. So we're gonna declare a div with an ID and we're gonna let that equal container. And then we're gonna close that div tag. Now, whenever I open a div tag, we need to close a div tag. So it's a good idea to get into that habit. And also down here, I'm gonna put container to ensure that I know where this div tag starts and where this div tag ends. And it helps you keep your structure as you move through. Now, once I've got my div container, I have also need to place in my heading. So I'm just gonna indent slightly with a tab and I'm gonna start with a heading one. This is gonna be my major title. And once again, I'm gonna give this an ID as well so I can talk directly to this if I would like to change it. And I'm gonna call it major title. So we can actually also put some informational text in there. So it's gonna be example, expert, system. And then we're gonna close off the header one tag. And we're gonna force a break with the break tag so that we go to the next line. Now the break tag will ensure that things don't go linearly across our page. So it won't go A, B, C. That will actually go A, B underneath, C underneath. So we're not requiring the browser to do the wrapping for us. So once that major title is in, nested with inside this div container, we had our question area. So we need to declare another div as a container. And we're gonna give that an ID. And we're gonna call this question area. Now, once again, when we open a div tag, we also want to close it. Now, the question area closes inside of the other div tag. And once again, we will put a comment in and we'll call it question area so we can see where they match up. So when I scroll down now, you can actually see where container starts and container ends, where question starts and question ends. We notice we've got a title here. We also need to put in the question to ask. So with inside this div tag, and I'll tab inside, notice I'm using stubbing out. So inside this div tag, so this resides inside this container here, I'm gonna put in another heading, which was a H2 by memory, and its ID is gonna be equal to question to ask. Now I'm also using a bit of camel case here with the lower case and the upper. Um, apply your developer principles as you need. Um, the other thing I'm gonna apply here as well is I'm gonna add a class, even though I don't have a CSS at the moment, I'm gonna put a class in there just so we can use it later. So this will be question, 
question style. So we can actually stylize this sort of question. And then I need to close this tag off and I can actually put question here, which is what will appear. And then I can close the H2 tag and also once again, put a break tag in to make sure it goes to the next line. Now this closes off the question area. So I'm just gonna remove this line. So you can actually see where the div tag starts and the indent. You notice now that the container has this inside of it. This is part A, part B, inside B it has this. And the very last thing we needed to put in here was actually our button area. So let's create a div tag for that with an ID, which is equal to button. So these are the options for the user that are gonna appear in here. Now I'm not really sure what they're gonna put in there to start with. So what I'm gonna do then is close this div tag off and once again, put a comment in so I know exactly what is happening. So as you can see, I'm applying good principles of internal documentation while I'm coding. Now, before we go any further, what we might actually do is run this code. So I'm just gonna save it and then run this. Now to open this in a browser, all you need to do is go to file, open file, find where you saved your index.html and you should see the following information. Now you notice there's actually no button options at the moment. So we might actually tab back in and place some button options in here. Now I'm just gonna put in a simple button. So what I'm gonna do is create a simple button by opening a tag and putting in the input type. So it's gonna be an input and then I can actually add its type and its input type is actually gonna be a button. Now once I've got my button, if I wanna stylize it, I could actually have a class for it. And we haven't created the CSS, so I'm sort of preempting what I might call it. So in this case here, I'm gonna call it question button. So I can actually stylize the question buttons. And then I can actually give it an ID if I would like. So I can actually go ID equals something like, and since this is the first one, it could actually be the start button. If I want to then I can give it a value. And this is what will appear on the face of the button. I will call the begin. And then we can actually give it an on click function. Now the on click is actually an action or an event trigger. So in this case here, if they click on this button, I want it to run a function. Now we haven't written our JavaScript yet, but the very first function I want it to run is the default question. So I'm gonna call it F question. And so all my functions will be F question and then I can actually give it a name. So in this case here, I can call it F question say um, zero. So I wanna to talk to F question zero and then I can actually then close this tag off. So now I'm gonna save this with the command S, go back to my browser and then refresh it. And you can now see there is a begin button that's appeared on our stage. So what we've done in this tutorial is actually create the framework that we need for our assignment. However, we haven't created the JavaScript file yet or stylized the user interface by using a cascading style sheet. They'll be in videos to come.